Okay, so I've got Android 13 from Consta Kang on this Raspad 3 running from a Samsung Bar 64 gig USB stick and actually it works pretty well. I'm quite impressed with it. Certainly more basic than some of the other Android versions but obviously it's early days. Uh, I've put Aptide on this and managed to install some apps and I thought I'd show a few of the processes that I use to do that. But uh, yeah, so far so good, really impressed with it. Let's just shut this down and uh, I'm going to put this on an SSD drive this time. So I'm going to plug my SSD into my Pi 4. I'm already running the operating system from another SSD. So first up we're going to need to download this. I'll put a link in the description to Consta Kang's site. Uh, the top image is the latest one and that's Consta Kang Android 13. So let's click on that. And if you get stuck on anything there's loads of decent information always in this. Uh, so it goes through all the things that are working and are supported. So you can see here hardware accelerated graphics for gaming, uh, V3D, OpenGL and Vulkan. And if we scroll down through, so we still don't have hardware video decoding and encoding, but there is a test one on there, uh, a highly experimental one. It says, I've tried it in previous builds and it tends not to improve. But then if it keeps changing, maybe at some point we'll get better performance than the, uh, the software decoding. And it's thanks to various people who've been involved with the project. And there's loads of questions and also some useful comments. Um, have a look through older versions as well, because obviously people have had various problems and work them out and there'll be solutions in the comments. So click on the top one to download. I've already downloaded this so it's in my downloads folder. Then we're going to launch Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS, go all the way down to the bottom and custom. And here it is, uh, Android 13 here. Don't need to unzip it or anything. Choose the storage. So I've got the 60 gig UCAN driver showed earlier on and hit right and yes. Okay that's all done and you can see it's created various different partitions. So let's hit continue, close that down. Let's go back into that drive and we're looking for the boot partition and config.txt. Now I'm only doing this because I've written to a USB device. So an SSD drive plugs into the USB socket. If you're using an SD card, you don't need to do this step. So let's scroll down and you can see here where it says boot device. I need to put a hash in here because I'm not using an SD card and I need to delete this hash so that it enables USB boot. There are other things in here, various different things with display and things like that, that you can change. I would say probably don't initially, but if you start to get problems, maybe you need to uh, delve into that and see if there's things that need to be fixed. You can see there's overclocking settings in here. I'm not sure if these apply separately. So I'm gonna go with something standard. So something like six and 2100. That's what I would often do. Obviously I've got adequate cooling. I've got a, a nice tower cooler on my Pi, so I'm not worried about it overheating. And now we can hit file and save, and then close that down. Now the partition at the moment, if I go back into it, will need expanding. So one of these won't be showing the, the right size. Now let's see which one it is. So I'm gonna launch Gparted, So all of these programs come in this build of KDE. I've got an available download of this if you want to use this operating system that I'm using. It's based on Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit and performs really well. So let's launch Gparted and you'll see, well this is the drive that the operating system on. This is the 60 gig hard drive and there's a load of unallocated space here. If I click on this and right click, I can do resize and I can drag it and then hit resize and tick and apply. There is another way of doing this with TWRP um, with Constantine's build. I've always done it this way and because I'm using Linux to write the operating system I just find it easier to do it this way around. So that's all done. So now what I need to do is shut this down and I'm going to switch off my Pi and I'm going to unplug the operating system I was running from. This was KDE Plasma so now I'm just running from this drive. Oh, it's a bit of a short cable to do this. Uh, and I'm actually gonna plug it into the USB 3 socket and then switch on. And Android will boot up for the first time. I can see the blue light has come on on my monitor. We've always had weird things with Android on Raspberry Pi with some monitors. So if it doesn't boot for you, plug it into a different monitor. If you've got a TV, then plug it into that and see if that works. It does take a while on the first boot, just bear with it. 
And here we can see it's all up and running. You can see my mouse and keyboard is working. Now I'm using ethernet at the moment, but the Wi-Fi was working fine. I showed it on the tablet earlier on. Uh, that was running with Wi-Fi. You don't have to do anything fancy. And to install apps, because we haven't got the Google Play Store yet, although I haven't tried it, uh, usually on the newer versions it doesn't work early on and then after a little bit uh, it tends to be supported uh, but I'm going to use Aptide which supports loads of apps anyway uh, so we've got uh, on the Aptide site hit download and uh, that will download it's only about a 19 megabyte file so hit download I'm going to have two of these because I've already got it on there and I'm going to copy that over to my USB stick and so if I get it on my iPad and downloads. Obviously you can do this on any device, you can do this on an Android device, iPhone, whatever. Uh, you're just getting this file onto a USB stick. So you can see here aptide latest uh, .apk and I'm just copying that to my USB stick and you can see that uh, I've already got it on there. So let's put this USB stick into Android. I'll plug it in the USB 2 socket because I tend to stay away from plugging in two USB 3 drives into a Pi 4 because it often will crash the system. Now as it stands, there's not an awful lot in here and it is pretty basic. The web browser isn't a sort of fully functioning web browser, although it does work with web pages, um, but as you can see, web browser tester and uh, there's not a lot of functionality or downloading or anything like that. And if we click on all apps, you can see that we've got calendar, camera, clock, uh, so the files app, gallery, uh, just an ordinary search and settings. So not a lot in there as it stands. So I'm going to put Aptide on mine. Uh, we can see in storage that we've got 17% used of 53.18 gigs. So uh, expanding the partition has worked. If we click on Bluetooth and pair a new device, we should start to see things like, well, I'd imagine my TV will show up on here. Oh, there you go. My Bose speaker shows up on here. So Bluetooth is working fine. You can see Raspberry Pi 4, and if we scroll down a bit, Android 13. If we go to System, there are Raspberry Pi settings, and there's loads of options in here. So audio device, mine defaults to 3.5, but you can change that. Display resolution, if you're going to play games on this, you might want to re uh, lower that resolution to 720. Force rotation. I can't remember this one before, touchscreen, enable configuration for official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen. I haven't got the official screen, but I have got several different 7-inch touchscreens that I could probably try on that. There's infrared support on this as well, mentioned in the docs. Various different mouse settings. Uh, you can see the overclock, so I don't know if you need to do this as well. So I'm going to put this up to 2000. You can enable ADB there, and that's the experimental hardware video decoding. Right, so let's restart this because it said you generally need to restart to apply settings. Okay, so let's drag up from the bottom. So left click and drag up and go to files. And here is my USB drive. If it doesn't detect it, first of all, just unplug it and plug it in again. So the Aptide APK handily has a little Android logo. So let's double click that and continue and install. Okay, so let's open that up and I always do don't allow on notifications. I accept the terms and conditions. Let's skip through this unless you want to read it. And let's find a few things to install on here. Um, so for a browser earlier on I had Firefox. I didn't think it worked very well so I'm going to see if uh, Edge is on there. Yeah Microsoft Edge browser says it's trusted so let's install that and OK. The Edge browser is based on Chrome. Uh, you probably can't get the normal Chrome on this because there's no G apps installed. I know some people don't like G apps. I like to have it for all the Google services. So let's hit allow. So we need to now go to settings to enable installing of different apps. Uh, so we, we're allowing it from Aptide. And install. Obviously do anything like this at your own risk. So if I go back open the Edge browser and we have a web browser. So if I click on something in here, now I haven't tried this yet so I'm not sure how well uh, or if this works. Yeah, it does look to be a bit slow. So maybe I try something else. So all we have to do, I mean it's you, you have an app store now, so go to Aptide and just do a search for something. Uh, so I've already tried Firefox. In fact, let's try Puffin because Puffin works really well. Uh, even on a Pi Zero 2W. So I don't want the Pro because I think you have to pay for it. 
So it installs nice and quick. Now Aptide is trusted, it doesn't ask. Let's hit open and see if this works. So Puffin is a cloud-based browser, uh, but what makes it really good is that it uses loads less data. So if you have limited data or an incredibly slow connection, you'll find that Puffin works really well. Yeah, that works pretty nicely. Now the good thing is now we have uh, a way of downloading APKs. So say for instance, I did a search for PPSSPP, which will be on the Aptide store anyway. Um, but uh, if we go into here, click on download, yeah, PPSSP for download, and we can download the APK file, and we'll save that. So that's probably already there. Oh yeah, download complete down the bottom here. Uh, hopefully that saves it in the same place. So files, download, oh yeah, P PPSSPP. So let's double click on that. And I need to allow from unknown sources, uh, but again, once you've done that, it will remember that and install. And let's open that. Okay, and uh, if we have a look for my USB stick, which I've got in here, which has got some PSP ROMs on it, in the RetroPie mount folder, ROMs, got loads of ROMs on here. PSP. So let's use this folder and allow. So let's browse to that. And here's all my games. So let's plug a controller in. And that works straight away. Haven't got to configure it or do anything else. So let's try a bit of GTA. Unfortunately, I have to turn down the music volume. Okay, not bad so far. I haven't played around with anything, any of the settings or anything like that, and it still looks pretty smooth. Uh, I'd have to play around with that a bit more. Let's just jump on a bike. Yeah, a little bit choppy, so I might have to turn on frame skip or drop the resolution a bit, but what a good start. So let's quit out of that, which I can do with my Xbox button. And I've been installing some more apps from here, so if I drag it up from the bottom, you can see there's loads on here now. Uh, so Ada64. So we can check various different things about the Pi. This is an eight gig Pi. Uh, if I go to CPU, it's reporting it's two gigahertz. So I did set in the config.txt, I set it to two one, but it looks like it only goes up to two gig. Maybe there's a way of overriding that. I might have a look into that and various different things on here. I don't know if it tells you about the 3D side. No, I don't, I don't think it does. So let's go back and uh, one of the other apps I downloaded. Well, I downloaded a few to do with Vulkan but the last one was 3D Mark uh, because that talks about having a test for Vulkan. So maybe it will say what version it's running on. Welcome to 3D Mark. Ah, here we go. Look, sorry, your device does not support all the Vulkan features required to run this test. Oh, it talks about 4K as well. Uh, is there Vulkan on that one? Doesn't look like there is on that. Oh, that talks about it. Let's download that one. And the good thing when I was running GTA was in 1080. Uh, I would normally drop that down to 720 because it boosts performance, but it still was running reasonably. All right, so hit play. Benchmark is running, don't touch your device. Now I usually stay away from a lot of um, graphics benchmarks on the Pi, um, especially on something like this, which is a very early build. So I'm not expecting this to have a high score. Um, but I just wanted to see what it reported on the Vulcan side of it as to what it was running. And let's see if the, when we get an end screen on this, if it shows us that. The audio sounds fine. I don't know if we're supposed to have a slideshow or if it's supposed to be uh, smooth motion. <laughs> we've got, we've got 0.9 FPS, uh, which again is to be expected. You know, this is, uh, uh, the Pi 4 is a few years old now. It's not the most powerful device. Uh, I'm surprised it's not crashing. It's, it's actually still trying to run it. Okay, so it does give me a score of 261, uh, which is obviously going to be pretty low. Um, but, uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me anything about the Vulcan, and I was thinking that maybe it was going to just sort of tell me what version of Vulcan it was running or something like that. But uh, never mind, let's move on. So I put on here um, Spotify because audio support's really good on these Android builds. So if you've got a music streaming service that you use, you'll often find that's just easier to do it through Android on a Pi. Um, but I also thought I'd try Netflix because Wi-Fi support obviously isn't going to be uh, official, but let's try and sign in and see what it does anyway. Okay, so Netflix has let me sign in. Will it let me play something? So Netflix is working and it's working all right on my 22 inch monitor. Obviously I can't play much of that. So that's nice to see. Let's try this Minecraft. I don't know what this Minecraft trial is, but let's see what it runs like. Again, desktop resolution running at 1080, could run this at 720. 
to try and get better performance, but let's see what happens. So start trial. Yeah, it's a bit slow on this, but again, I can drop it down to 720. So display resolution, yeah, 1280 by 720. And I'm gonna have to restart to do that, which is found here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's more like it. That's fine. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, definitely better than it was. Um, but the version of Minecraft um, that I would say runs better on the Pi, oh, I'm stuck, uh, is the um, the one in Pi apps. I've I've got a video on how to install it, but that works really well on the Pi. I actually played that for quite a while and really enjoyed it. Right, let's try something else. Uh, try a bit of Roblox. Well, it's working. Uh, and it's actually working, I would say that's working not too bad, really. Graphics look all right. Or oh, you just go through the door, you don't have to open the door. Um, but uh, yeah, nice to see that working on such an early build. I was expecting it to have to go back to an older version to be able to get this working. Now, the previous build I had, I changed the wallpaper. You can right click on an empty part of the desktop and get a wallpaper and change it. If you've downloaded something, it will show up in the gallery. Uh, and you can see there's a few widgets there and a few uh, options to change the settings on it as well. But uh, I'm actually really impressed that we've got Android 13, which loads of devices will never get, uh, and it's working on the Pi 4, and it's actually working pretty reasonably, uh, even at this early stage. So well done to Constacang and everybody involved. I hope this video helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.